Second speaker in this session is uh, Sabine Putz. She is Head of Research and Development, Project Manager and Project Leader at the company Solid, involved in research and development strategy, team leading, project leading, project acquisition, management and realization of research and development projects. Sabine is also involved with the SHC Task 45 Subtask Lead, Operating Agent for IEA SHC Task 55, and Project Manager at ROCHE Diagnostic Requirements Management. Involved in risk management for blood gas analyzer, scheduling, stakeholder management, integration management, scope management, workshop facilitation, and project manager at Huberger Eloxel Finishing Technologies for Magnesium and Titan. She's also a development engineer and project manager at Isovolta AG, involved in the encapsulation of solar cells. I think Sabine must have a very, very busy day. <laughs> Please welcome Sabine. Thank you very much for the comprehensive introduction. <laughs> um, yes, hello again from my side, um, coming from Austria, and I will tell you a little bit about um, the integration of large-scale solar heating and cooling installation into district heating and cooling networks. Um, just um, to present my company where I come from on a glance, Solid is a turnkey provider for large-scale solar thermal installation and we are the technology and market, world market leader for solar thermal cooling. And SOLID is also an ESCO, that means an energy service company. That means that we are not only selling installations, we are also selling heat. That means SOLID is financing, uh, constructing, operating the installation and selling the heat, for example, to utilities, uh, for, like district heating utilities. So why this IA SHC task 55? Um, we heard about that the solar thermal market for small application is decreasing and the market for large installation is a kind of booming in some countries and there's of course an interest all over the world to substitute fossils and to push the overall energy efficiency in urban areas for solar district heating and cooling. This is due to the high gas and oil price. It's not in each country that there's high gas and oil price, but in some countries it's very high, and solar heat and cold has to be competitive to gas and oil. So this task describes the step from megawatt systems up to gigawatt systems, and the system needs to be at low cost, a reduced heat price compared to com competitive to gas and oil, and there's also um, a very big need for increased collector field efficiency for, valid, for validated increased collector efficiency and output. And the targeted audience of task 55 are heat suppliers, local communities, housing enterprises, industry, policy makers, and of course researchers and experts like you are. So um, there's a very successful development of such large installations in Denmark. I will show you later on some slides about that. And in Denmark, they could manage to decrease the primary energy consumption very significantly. And in Copenhagen, this is the main city of Denmark, they want to be carbon free, completely carbon free until 2030. And how can they reach that? They have a kind of energy mix uh, with wind, solar thermal and heat pumps. And whole Denmark wants to be carbon free until 2050. Austria has also a long-term tradition in solar district heating and is the pioneer, generally the pioneer of solar thermal heat. Um, but uh, plenty of other countries are showing up in the moment with solar district heating installations like China, Germany, Sweden, Canada, Norway, Poland, Netherlands, Spain, Portugal, Greece, and Turkey. They have already installed larger solar district heating installations. And the government priorities towards this ambition, environmental and energy policy are changing very slow, but they are changing. And uh, I would say there's a big trend towards solar district heating. This can be observed. 
So uh, we already saw this installation. You can see um, the big, the big collector area on the right side is uh, is the old collector field, and on the left side there is the newer expanded collector field. And on the back you see the seasonal storage, which has been filled up with water to store the heat, which is gained in summertime, and to use it in the cold time to provide it the heat to the cities. And it's directly located beneath uh, the district heating. Uh, utility of this uh, city voyants and the collector field has a size of 70,000 square meters and the big storage uh, has 200,000 cubic meter volume and uh, it needs half a year to fill it up with water and another half year or, or, or more to get it heated so this is very impressive. Um, this is a slide you can see here orange and blue points um, this is Denmark and the orange points show already existing installations, big installations, and the blue points show, show where new installations will be built or existing installations will be expanded soon. And the uh, planned expansions for the next two years is about 400,000 square meter collector area only for Denmark. In the moment, they have around 1 million square meter collector area feeding directly in the district heating network of their cities. And the thick bars show um, the installed collector area, and the thin bars show the number of installed installations. So in the moment, 100 installations are installed, and they are coming up another 30, 35 installations within the next two, two years. This is, uh, these are solar district heating examples in Austria. Uh, we heard from Werner, Austria has very, very uh, many collector area installed per capita. Um, we have 5 million square meters collector area in, in Austria, but not for solar district heating. For solar district heating, it's only <laughs> 25,000 square meter, but it's coming up soon, a very big project. And on these uh, three pictures, you can see two installations in Graz, where I come from, and one installation in Upper Austria on the roof of a fair trade, and all these installations are feeding in the district heating network. So this is um, a collector field um, which shows or uh, which ops, um, investigates performance collector tests, and it's the worldwide first uh, in situ collector field, collector uh, field installed in in Graz, where I come from, it's about 500 meters far away from my office. And there we are doing some investigations on the collector performance because uh, when you measure a single collector in laboratory, you get a, a certain value for the performance. But it's not the same uh, if you measure it, the collector output in field. So simulations are, be done, uh, are done in a research project we build around in Austria. And from these simulations, we will derive um, also optimizations. And on the other hand, we are measuring the real collector um, efficiency under ambient conditions. And we have installed a very high price, precise measurement um, equipment. Uh, the wind is measured, the shading is measured, and, and all the temperatures and pressure is measured, and also the weather station is installed there to have very, really the exact ambient condition um, from which we can derive uh, optimization of the system. Compared a single collector test perform a single collector performance compared to field, uh, we have 20% loss in field, and so we are, have to investigate this 20% loss because I tell you, we are selling heat, we are not selling the installation and when we want to sell heat, we need much heat coming out of this installation because we want to sell the heat. And so it's very important to have maximum uh, efficiency, to have also a planning reliability and to create trust in the investors that they are trusting, okay, this installation gives us such and such megawatt or gigawatt, okay, we are going to invest in that. And that's the reason why we did this installation. And um, we currently started with the measurements. And um, yeah, if you're interested in the results, please contact me. So these are the key data from task 55. It's recently started in September 2016. Um, SHG member countries can participate in each meeting, and non member countries can participate as observer, but then they have no full access to all results, and they also are not allowed to show up at each meeting. 
but um, it's, it's possible to contribute and to uh, participate in the meetings. Currently six uh, member countries are contributing uh, to my task. It's Denmark, Canada, Austria, Spain, China and Germany. And 11 under, uh, observer countries are also delivering inputs from Israel, Poland, Finland, Australia, Switzerland, Italy, UK, United Emirates, or Sweden, US and Singapore. Two, two weeks ago we had the kickoff in Graz and with 25 experts from 18 institutions and from these 80 institutions there were nine industry partners. The scope of task 55 is to characterize solar thermal systems for district heating and cooling bigger than 0.5 megawatt capacity up to gigawatt system size. And the, te the technical and economical specifications of district heating network, um, which are relevant for the integration, will be described. And also the hybrid technology. When I say hybrid technology, I mean uh, to integrate also waste heat from industry or heat pumps, biomass, gas, uh, this is seasonal storage, and so on. And uh, during the task, analysis of system components and their integration in the, in the district heating net will be analyzed, such as system temperature requirements, optimization of hydraulic systems, interdependencies between large collector fields and seasonal storages, self-learning controls, large collector field performances and performance guarantees, very important. And we will also include system and uh, rating certificates. This comes from another task, from task 57 we will implement the results from them. And then we will assess and design uh, large-scale seasonal storages big, with a bigger volume than 50,000 cubic meter. And it's, then we will provide uh, a modular design for large-scale systems because it's, it's good to have ready designed systems at a def defined size and uh, at a defined output and capacity um, if we want to sell it to district heating uh, utilities. Uh, further, we will uh, investigate the upscaling and also the expansion of potential existing medium or large scale installations. And last but not least, economic requirements on these big installations and the market analysis of global and country development will be done. The task is uh, divided in four subtasks. Subtask A uh, is about the network analysis and integration led by an Austrian Institute of Technologies. Subtask B is about component testing, system monitoring and quality assurance led by a solar company uh, from China, from Sunrain. And Subtask C is led by Denmark. They have a lot of uh, experience about these big systems and it's dealing with system designs and led by Plan Energy. And Subtask C is dealing with economic aspects and promotions led by a Spanish research organization called Tecnalia. This is a typical example when I'm talking about the system. You can see here solar field, you can see uh, heat storage, you can see absorption heat pumps. Also a chiller can be implemented here if you want to produce cold for a district cooling network, but no solar district cooling is existing in the moment. We are just preparing the requirement how to integrate solar cold in, in district cooling networks. And you can also integrate um, waste heat from industry and sometimes a load convention storage is also necessary and this combined uh, concept or, and the heat managed or heat produced out of that will feed the district heating network and this is the red line on the right side, this is main pipe main pipe of district heating and we took this concept and made the feasibility for the city where I'm coming from, for Graz Werner already mentioned this project. Um, Graz has about 270,000 inhabitants and uh, we did the feasibility to, to find out the technical and economical optimum for Graz because Graz is running out of heat in 2020. We have to replace gas. There are two old gas boilers from the 60s and, and Graz is really willing to replace fossils and to go ahead with the renewables and the optimum concept for Graz would be to have 400. 50,000 square meters of solar thermal. This is about 240 gigawatt hours. Um, then a seasonal pit storage, uh, not only one, it's about three storages with the size of 1.8 million cubic meters. Then two absorption heat pumps, each 50 megawatts. And together um, they feed with 
309 gigawatt hours at 85 degrees directly in the district heating main pipe which leads to Graz. And with, with, with that concept we can reach a 25% solar fraction and a 45% um, covering of the total heat demand in Graz in 2020. So this is my last slide. I just want to announce the next meetings. Maybe some of you want to participate in the task or you have interesting projects which can provide some information to the task or we can share information. And the next meeting is in Denmark. There we can see a very big installation um, where a concentrated tracking collectors combined with flat collectors in series are uh, feeding in the district heating of Aalborg. And the third meeting will be in November in Abu Dhabi and it's combined with the Solar World Congress and yeah, it would be very nice if some of you show up there. And then I'd like to say shukran and thank you very much for the attention and if you want to join the task or you have any information on solar district heating uh, installations which are very big, please deliver it to me. You can ha see here my email address and also the web page of Task 55. Thank you.